look at GCOC10, that's a tricky thing to say. Um, one more time, uh, we've looked at uh, interior angles equaling 180. We've looked at external angle equals the sum of the two remote angles. And we've looked at the base angles of an isosceles must equal 180. Here is one more uh, nice little relationship found in a triangle, and it deals with something called a mid-segment. Now, a mid-segment uh, is probably a new term to you, but it shows up in different shapes, and its properties are basically this. That a mid-segment is the connection of two midpoints. So if I was to find the, the midpoint of AB here and the midpoint of AC, And if I was to connect them with a segment, this is known as the mid-segment. So if I, uh, there are three potential mid-segments, by the way. If I found this one, I could connect it and so on. Uh, it might be easier just for now to look at one of the three. But, but if, we, um, if we did this one as well, if we found the, the midpoint here and the midpoint here, the mid-segment would look like this, or like this. Now, immediately, I think students look and can see at least a conjecture of what's taking place. Um, they can see that the two lines, the mid-segment and the, um, the other side, the third side that's not being used, are parallel. And that is true. Okay? Now, a couple things about this particular statement I'm making. I'm not sitting here and proving it to you. There are a number of proofs, and depending on what, what point in the year you're on uh, would depend on how you could do it. One, if you've already done things about dilations and similarity, you can prove that they're similar and that it's a, a one to two ratio, getting larger or smaller. Uh, if you are in a coordinate geometry area, you can place these guys on a grid and also using uh, slopes and a few things determine that they are. Um, there are a number of ways. There's a, a congruence method as well. Uh, none of them are just quick and easy, just to bam, let me just show it to you. So I'm going to go on the, you're believing me this time, all right? And uh, at another time, we'll, we'll lay out some of these proofs in more specific. But... The two main characteristics is that uh, there are parallel lines that are formed. And so this would be parallel with this. This would be parallel to this. And this would be parallel to this. The second thing, which is quite cool, is the mid-segment, in terms of its size, is one-half, is one-half, of the uh, parallel side. So, and I think, I hope, you can kind of get the grasp that idea. And, and think of it in terms of kind of like a dilation, that there's this tiny little triangle and it, everything that used to be one in length gets doubled. And so it would make sense that the length of this would be uh, this length happening twice. And so it grows at twice the scale factor. And so whatever this is, it gets played out, uh, let's make it three dashes, it gets played out here twice the size. And so uh, I think if you think of it in terms of, even though maybe you haven't covered dilations yet, Uh, that idea of it, an, a, a proportional expansion of twice the size. And so two things happen. We get parallel lines, and we also get um, it to be exactly half the size of that side, or that side is double, depending on how you want to read it. All right? Good luck with this. We'll look at some specific ones up close. Segment relationship, as stated earlier, is pretty straightforward. Two things that you're looking for is the relationship of parallel, And the second is it's uh, half the size of the third side. And I don't know the best name for that third side, but the side that it's parallel to. 
So here, if they give you the mid-segment is simply 13 and a half, it doesn't get much better than that. This would just be 27. It would be a doubling relationship. And again, as I just said previously uh, in the theory part, basically this little triangle is getting dilated out. This one's more interesting because I have 3x and this is 42. Now, a lot of students will just say, oh, 3x equals 42. This is not correct. What you need to say is two of the three x's would equal 42. Now you can solve the problem. x is 7 in this particular case. Because this has to equal 21 if this is 42. And then this is also just using the relationship of knowing that these have to be parallel. Parallel lines, these would be called corresponding angles and would be equal. So x has to equal 68. And uh, you'd go from there. So I think the only trick here, I'll put a little asterisk here, is if they give you something with a right angle in it, they may apply that little uh, Pythagorean relationship to solving it. And, uh, and I bet you that there's a question or two that will do that. So keep your eyes open for the Pythagorean theorem.